Hello, Blythe, Evie, Joe, Jack, Callum, Cadence, Lucy, Orion, and anyone else who's listening. Welcome to Storytime. Today's story is The Other Side, written by Jacqueline Woodson, illustrated by E.B. Lewis. The Other Side, by Jacqueline Woodson, illustrated by E.B. Lewis. It's dedicated for Elisabetta and Tashan by Jacqueline Woodson and to my dear friend Fran Emery by E.B. Lewis. Jacqueline Woodson begins with an author's note. She says that when she began to tell the story of Clover and Annie, she had no idea what kind of life this book would take on. She wanted it to be a story about the way in which young people change the world each day. And she wanted it to be a story that brought about hope. And she has been all over telling this story, sharing it with students and they always want to know is the fence down and she says down no lower definitely um so she wants all of us to imagine a world without fences so that people can be together sharing the joy of life So the story begins. That summer, the fence that stretched through our town seemed bigger. We lived in a yellow house on one side of it. White people lived on the other. And Mama said, don't climb over that fence when you play. She said it wasn't safe. That summer, there was a girl who wore a pink sweater. Each morning, she climbed up on the fence and stared over at our side. Sometimes I stared back. She never sat on that fence with anybody. That girl didn't. So it's two little girls on different sides of the fence interested in each other. Once, when we were jumping rope, she asked if she could play, and my friend Sandra said no without even asking the rest of us. I don't know what I would have said. Maybe yes, maybe no. Uh, She really wants to play with them, doesn't she? but people are afraid. That summer, everyone and everything on the other side of that fence seemed far away. When I asked my mama why, she said, because that's the way things have always been. Sometimes when me and mama went into town, I saw that girl with her mama She looked sad sometimes, that girl did. Don't stare, my mama said. It's not polite. Boy, aren't these illustrations beautiful? It rained a lot that summer. On rainy days, that girl sat on the fence in a raincoat. She let herself get all wet and acted like she didn't even care. Sometimes I saw her dancing around in puddles, splashing and laughing. That's kind of fun to do, isn't it? Mama wouldn't let me go out in the rain. That's why I bought you rainy day toys, my mama said. You stay inside here where it's warm and safe and dry. 
But every time it rained, I looked for that girl, and I always found her somewhere near the fence. Someplace in the middle of the summer, the rain stopped. When I walked outside, the grass was damp and the sun was already high up in the sky. And I stood there with my hands up in the air. I felt brave that day. I felt free. Oh, look how happy she is. I got close to the fence and that girl asked me my name. Clover, I said. My name's Annie, she said, Annie Paul. I live over yonder, she said, by where you see the laundry. That's my blouse hanging on the line. She smiled then. She had a pretty smile. And then I smiled, and we stood there looking at each other smiling. It's nice up on this fence, Annie said. You can see all over. I ran my hand along the fence. I reached up and touched the top of it. A fence like this was made for sitting on, Annie said. She looked at me sideways. My mama says I shouldn't go on the other side, I said. My mama says the same thing, but she never said nothing about sitting on it. Neither did mine, I said. That summer, me and Annie sat together on that fence, and when Sandra and them looked at me funny, I just made believe I didn't care. Some mornings, my mama watched us. I waited for her to tell me to get down from that fence before I break my neck or something, but she never did. I see you made a new friend, she said one morning, and I nodded, and mama smiled. That summer, me and Annie sat on that fence and watched the whole wide world around us. Wow, they're two friends sitting on a fence. One day, Sandra and them were jumping rope near the fence, and we asked if we could play. I don't care, Sandra said, and when we jumped, Sandra and me were partners the way we used to be. Oh, wow. So Annie gets to play with them. When we were too tired to jump anymore, we sat up on the fence, all of us, in a long line. <laughs> Look how tired they all are. Now they're all just sitting up on the fence. Someday, somebody's going to come along and knock this old fence down, Annie said. And I nodded. Yeah. I said, someday. So they were divided by a fence because they had different color skin. So hopefully we will all get to the place where we can pull all those fences down and be friends with whoever we want to be friends with. I hope you like that story. It's got a really good message to it. And I hope you have friends like Annie and Clover who find ways to be friends no matter what. This is something about Jacqueline Woodson. It tells you about her and, and the awards she's gotten and where she lives. And it's also got her website where you can look her up and learn more about her. It also has information about E.B. Lewis, the illustrator, and the awards he's gotten and where he lives. And it has his website so you could look up and learn more about him. Well, I hope you like that story. I really love that story. It's the same two people that, that did 
each kindness. I think you can kind of tell it's got the same kind of beautiful illustrations and the same kind of wonderful message. Tomorrow, for story time, we will be reading Tiki Tiki Tembo, retold by Arlene Moselle and illustrated by Blair Lent. It is a Chinese folk tale. I think you'll like it. So keep taking good care of yourselves. Keep loving on each other. Always, always love yourselves just the way you are. And never forget I love each one of you to the moon and back. We'll be back tomorrow for story time when we read Tiki Tiki Tembo. Bye-bye.